Hey, Prosperity Nation, Randy Gage here, back with another episode of the world-renowned <laughs> Power Prosperity Podcast, and I'll be simulcasting this one on the Prosperity TV YouTube channel, because this is another one of those cool shows with one of my cool friends, where we just sit around and sip tea and chat, and you get to eavesdrop in on <laughs> So cool. And this is my longtime near dear friend, Lisa Jimenez, aka Lisa J from lisajcoaching.com. Um, and she's been working in the area of personal growth, sales, particularly the intersection of sales and personal growth. A lot of work lately uh, in the area of the mind. She has a new book coming out that is, it's actually out by now already. Yep. Uh, we will talk about that at some point. But first, welcome back to episode awesome. two with Lisa J. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Randy. Great to be here. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> so let's talk with, uh, you're working a lot with Mindset Reset lately, which is, of course, the title of your book, your new book. What do you, what are people resetting from? Why do people need a reset? Somebody listening first time, they're like, I don't know, I'm picking up my dry cleaning every day. I've got my job. Uh, I'm binge, binge watching Game of Thrones this weekend. What do I need a reset? Exactly. For all those reasons that you just stated. <laughs> so funny, Randy, you guys, I just got a, a private message on Facebook from somebody that saw one of my, uh, one of my YouTube videos. And they said, I don't understand retrain the brain. Did I, unless I, unless I had a brain injury, why do I need to retrain the brain? So you're kind of asking the same question yeah. as this one yeah. person, because anyone who's done any kind of work in personal development, you know, you have primal programming, you have limiting beliefs, you have habitual patterns, and they get in your way. And in fact, you have actually collapsed those thoughts, those beliefs, those habitual patterns with who you think you are. So you've actually collapsed who you really are with those habitual patterns or what I call in the book, primal programming. But right, so, dig into that. What is uh, primal programming? Well, my belief, I assert that we, who we truly are, pure potential energy, and we came to this life experience on this physical planet, and as soon as we were welcomed into this world on our birth date, we were also welcomed into programming, which caused limiting beliefs, like primal programming. So I would assert that, yes, we're taught these because our ancestors had them, because our parents had them and they're habitual. However, I believe they are primal. They are part of the human experience, these programs. And they all result, revolve around five specific beliefs of the physical. Do you want me to go through those five? <laughs> yeah, let me just jump in to say, and I know you saw it because you retreated it. Somebody, there's a lot of parallels, you guys, between the work I'm, I'm doing, the work Lisa is doing, and so somebody tweeted out, I said, uh, hey, Lisa Jimenez's new book is out. If you like Randy Gage's work, you will love this book. Mm -hmm. uh, and I saw you retweeted that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, so I think that people in my world are all in on this idea. Uh, obviously, my last book was Radical Rebirth, which love is it. a reset if ever there was one. A reset is, can certainly be a rebirth. So we, we have a lot of parallels. I'm talking about obviously the programming, the data sphere, the education system, government. You're going even deeper. You're saying, are you, would you go so far as to say they're born with these five things or are they learned? Where, where would you come down on that issue? Great distinction. I would assert they're born with them. We are born with these primal programs just by the, the reality of living in a physical realm, a physical experience. Okay. So if we say we're born with them, we definitely got to double click on that and say, what are these five, mm -hmm. uh, would you call them beliefs or would you call them 
mind viruses? Would you call them brainwash? Uh, what what label they're would? They're simply beliefs, but they are truths in the physical world. So let's just, you ready to just jump in so our listeners and, and, and viewers will understand. Ready? Yeah. These five primal programs are simply beliefs that are truths of the physical world. But as I just said a few minutes ago, we were born into this world from somewhere. So the whole book Mindset Reset is about unleashing that part of you that is pure potential energy. Because if you put a magnifying glass, a high powered mag uh, micro magnifying glass on any part of your body, you, what would you see? You, you, would, you would see a community of cells, trillions of cells. And if you put a high powered uh, uh, microscope on one of those cells, what would you see? You would see nucleus. And if you put a high powered microscope on that one nuclei, what would you see? Well, now we know in quantum physics and the new sciences on the planet, you see nothing. So the core of who we are is this incre incredible, pure potential energy. But when we came to this world, and here's Carl Jung's work, because I'm a behavioral psychologist, so I studied Carl Jung's work, and he talked about the individuation process. So of course we have to individualize because we're all one when we come to this physical experience. We're pure potential waves of energy. And so in that individuation process, these five beliefs, these five core beliefs of the physical realm help us individuate. How we responded to these five physical beliefs, or you could even call them truths, how we responded to them actually created our ego, created form, created our personality, created us in a form as, oh, there's Lisa Jimenez, the character. Oh, there's Randy Gage, the character. And these five primal programs or five beliefs of the, the physical experience are, number one, there's something wrong here. There's something wrong here. And our brain, our trillion-year-old brain, it is wired for survival. So in our physical realm, we're always protecting ourselves. We're all, always predicting. And it's always the worst case scenario in the physical. There's something wrong here. And you know what? Maybe there is something wrong here on this physical planet. When you came from a spiritual realm or you came from pure potential energy and you see what you see, you feel the heaviness of the physical realm, of the physical nature, there's something wrong here. But can you imagine with that belief, knowing that who we really are in our essence is well, so energy. <clears throat> let me share the argument I had with my Rolfer yesterday. Mm -hmm. My Rolfer is the most brilliant, intuitive healer I have ever met in my lifetime. And I'm an old, old guy. <laughs> His name's Jorge Gonzalez. Brilliant guy. I mean, he, it's like I open the door and I'm standing there. Hey, Jorge. And he says, what happened to your right foot? Like, you got hit with a softball. Well, how, how do you know? I'm, I, I can just tell by the way you're standing, you know? Yeah. Or he'll come and say, did you get some dental work or something? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had like a three-hour dental appointment. And he's like, was it the upper molars? <laughs> yeah. And you think he's living under your bed, spying. Right. But no, he just recognizes these the way muscles and tendons are moving. I mean, he, he's the most gifted, li literally the most gifted body worker I've ever met in my life, right? And Randy, I believe that we all have that capability, but what's his name, Raul? No, Jorge. Jorge, Jorge, just practice it. We become who we practice to be. Well, we hold that, hold that thought. To be. Hold, yeah, hold that thought, because I won't disagree with that. I, you know me, I believe we all have genius in different capacities. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's into a lot of energy work, and he does this thing, testing, he's tweaking his fingers or whatever. So he was, so I have this problem with my foot where I got hit with a softball, right? And he's saying, well, you know, I think it's because you haven't released the emotion. You had this problem um, where uh, something to do with your father. And I'm like, Jorge, you know that I have no memories of my father whatsoever. I would, you know, I know, but Got there was it. something with your father. That's what your body is telling me. And he's like, why are you so skeptical of this, uh, you know, energy stuff? And I'm like, 
I believe in science, right? So science, but with a capital S, science, because political science is not science. Even what you do, psychology, I would argue, is not science, right? I would agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially you know, with the, the sciences that we have access to now. <laughs> right. So science, the whole premise of science is you create a hypothesis and then you try to prove it wrong. And if you can't prove it wrong, then it's science. It's proven science, mm-hmm. or at least we think it's proven science until something advances and we're able to now prove it wrong three years from now because we learned something else about molecular biology or gravity or whatever the case. Um, So he, I I think, so he, you know, he's beating me up like, stop fighting this. This is, it was something with your father and he was disappointed maybe because he knew he had to leave and he was going to abandon you. And he felt that. And I'm telling you, you, you have, you're being affected by that and you got to release it. Hmm. So would you say there's a corollary between somebody being born believing there is something wrong here that maybe that's a an energy or an intuition that they have inherited from the generations preceding them that their mother grandmother great grandma you know whoever who just have felt there is something wrong with the world and they're born with that? I mean, would you? Absolutely. And remember, this is unconscious. This is all in the unconscious. So we don't even realize that we live life. We show up in the world with that wiring. There's something wrong here. So yes, I I, I, I just think- so, it's Okay, so here's, here's the next question to really challenge our you and my thinking, both. Um, is that feeling true that something is wrong or no? In the physical realm, from a physical perspective, there's things wrong in the world. There's scarcity. There's not enough. But in the spiritual realm, which is who we really are, again, back to that pure potential energy of who you and I truly are, our essence, there's nothing wrong here. All things happen for our highest good. There's enough. There's more than enough. And it is only in our limiting primal programs that we believe there's not enough. And so we actually manifest and create there's not enough. And then we make a problem that there's not enough. And then we make a problem that we have a problem that there's not enough. It's, it's <laughs> All right. Insanity. So that's, that's how we're wired though. This is the reality. Right, of the so you believe now. we're hardwired at birth to have this core foundational belief. Something is wrong here. Mm-hmm. That's number one. What's number two. Let it go. Exactly what your, your, your therapist said you let it go and how you do that is wait that's the second thing we're born with or that's what you're supposed to do about the first thing supposed to do you actually become aware of it i actually have a mind shift game where you say oops there it is oops there's my primal programming oops there's me thinking there's not enough oops there's me making a problem of it oops there's me picking up a sales call and it's and creating this imagination that this person is going to say no oops there it is oops there's my scarcity and actually bringing levity and humor to this because what's the truth the truth in our spiritual realm and who we truly are and the essence of who who we truly are there's more than enough there's prosperity there's abundance everything that you've been teaching for 20 30 years randy and and with the new sciences we actually have evidence that in this spiritual realm there's abundance there's more than enough we can manifest results that are needed But boy, we got to become aware of what the mind tells us, because I just want people to to be very clear about the power of their mind. Yeah, yeah. Your mind can create whatever you want in life. But because we live in this polarity, the physical, the spiritual, because we live in this polarity, the mind often is our biggest saboteur. It's our torturer. But Mindset Reset is about shifting that hierarchy. So instead of coming from the physical reality of what you can see, what you're hardwired to be programmed at, whoops, there it is. Whoops, there it is. And you can let that go. And what gets unleashed, what what starts bubbling to the surface, what gets unleashed is spiritual truth. That there's abundance right here, right now. And when I am in that, we call it frequency, but when I'm aligned 
with that core truth. There's enough. There's more than enough. That person says yes. An idea right. is dropped out of the sky to you. Like you actually see there's a result from my alignment with the spiritual truth of there's enough. But that's shifting the focus, the perspective, right, right. The hierarchy. All right, let me clean something up just before we go into number two. Because I said what Lisa does, which is mental health, psychology, psychiatry, I don't consider that science with a capital S. Please don't anybody listening or watching take that to mean I think the, there's no value there. I think there's tremendous value, right? I didn't kill myself because I had a good therapist who I worked things out with. I was able to start having healthy functional relationships because I had a therapist show me why I kept repeating dysfunctional relationships. So I really believe in mental health and mental health counseling. I, so I want people to be really clear of that. I just say, that's not, it's like dream interpretation. You know, there are people who make their living interpreting dreams. I'm like, how would we know if that is true or mm -hmm. false? <laughs> you say that the reason I dreamed that Ronald McDonald got his head cut off by a Ferris wheel was because when I was young, my mother abandoned Push me. Pushed you off the Ferris wheel? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, you know, I'm watching a, a Nat Geo thing and they say, this pod of whales is swimming five miles away from these, the, these orca whales are five miles away from these seals, but they know when they get, I'm like, how do you know what those orcas are thinking? You know, I'm always going to question the premise. So um, what the, the, in relation to what Lisa and I are talking about right now, I was just saying, okay, that's not science of with a capital S that we can say, okay, this electron reacts to that electron and creates this thing or mm -hmm. gravity happens because of the rotation of the planet and it's you know going around the sun or whatever the case. Mm -hmm. All right, so I just wanted to clear that up for anybody yeah. listening, I'm not um, throwing shade on mental health and mental health counselors. Right. And even down that same road, my coaching over you or with you then Randy would be, Yes, you are a pragmatist, you are um, a realist, and there's so much that we're missing because we're so focused on the physical reality or the proof of this physical reality. So when you're questioning things, it would be so cool for you to add, huh, what if, what if that was possible? I'm questioning it now, I'm gonna prove it now, but what if you actually release any of the resistance to something new or an awareness that is being presented to you in that moment. So it's one of the uh, mind shift aerobics is just to ask, what if, what if that was true? What if I was called to grow a global business? What if that actually retrains the brain, that simple two word question, what if? And that's moving from the physical into pure potential energy because we are so hardwired to come from the physical reality of there's something wrong here. All right, let's go back to our list. What's the second the thing second that one. we're born with? Primal truth? program. Yeah. There's, there's not enough. There's not enough and I'm not enough. There's not enough. Can you imagine showing up in your world all day long as there's not enough? Then when you get wealth, I've had three people in my life in over the last two weeks, Randy, and you guys, receive an inheritance. Someone received a business in a will and they were just realized that they received a property, a business and a lot in a will. Another, mm -hmm. uh, there's a family member received a huge inheritance. This person doesn't have to work for money for the rest of their life. And they're only 30 years old. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, I'm working with these people in Mindset Reset to manage the guilt around that. Because if you show up in the world, there's not enough and you receive great love, you feel guilty for it. Your house didn't burn down in the paradise fire, but all your friends and neighbors did. You feel guilty for it. And may yeah, survivor I say, this, guilt. this is just BS. This is just BS. When we can radically break through these primal programs that there's, there's not enough, I'm not enough, and move into that spiritual truth, that realm of the pure potential energy, of course there's enough. There's enough, hope, there's more yeah, than enough. You guys listening, I hope you're really picking up 
the correlation between what Lisa just said and when you read my books and when I'm talking about the unworthiness issues, because mm. they stem from this guilt. Mm. Because if you feel that money is finite, if you feel that love is finite, if you feel that prosperity of any kind is finite, mm. and then you're blessed with abundant mm. prosperity, Mm -hmm. your natural reaction is going to be that guilty feeling. Yep. Oh, why did I get this? And then mm -hmm. if you don't resolve that guilty feeling, you will self-sabotage and blow it up and lose that. Mm -hmm. And this is how you resolve it. It's not who you really are. You just say, oops, there it is. There's your primal programming. That's the primal programming, you guys. That's the survival mindset. That's the survival brain telling you there's not enough. It's not who you really are. So when you can create the distinction of, oops, there it is. You're aware, oh, there's my guilt. Hi, guilt. <laughs> and you actually see it. You can be with it. Oh, there's my anxiety. Hello, anxiety. I'm big enough, Randy. You guys, I'm big enough listeners. When I have anxiety attacks, which sometimes I do, I can move that anxiety out of my body and I can look at it over there and I'm big enough to love it. I'm that much love in my pure potential energy. And I can be with that little girl, that primal belief that's having an anxiety attack. And I can be with her and I can love her and I can allow her to be, I see you, it's okay. Just like we did when we were raising our children and they had a temper attack, right? The terrible twos. We, I would look at my three kids and say, are you done now? <laughs> oh, nope, not done. He's not done, everyone. He's still in his temper tantrum in the middle of Publix grocery store in Coral Springs, Florida. He's not done yet. Oh, he's done. He's done now. And then kids get done with this, their, their temper tantrum and mommy, I love you. <laughs> Let's go shopping. What if we behaved like that for ourselves, our adult selves? That little right, that's the self-awareness that people, it's Beautiful. so- Beautiful, it's freedom. Yes. But we give that to ourselves by being big enough to be with, be with our judgment, be with our anxiety, be with our stress. I see you, you're stressed out. I love you. It's okay, you can be here. There's space enough for you. And guess what happens to that anxiety, that stress, that judgment? It dissolves because you give no power to it. Love conquered it. And that's the essence of that pure potential energy. All right. So Number wait, three. Wait, we got to stop right now. And because this is a big one, we need you to. You can't do an hour on each of these. You all know, all of right? our listeners right now and all of our viewers, <laughs> what are you holding on to? What are you still judging? You're, you had an anxiety attack this morning. Maybe you had judgment this morning. Maybe you got in a fight with your wife this morning. Even today, you're noticing this not enough. There's something wrong here. This primal programming. Could you just be with it? Hello, stress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm big enough to love you. You can be here today. Please, I'm asking you. Randy and I are giving you permission to be with that part of you. Embrace your duality. Hello, stress. I know you're thinking, we're never going to get through this podcast if I let Lisa do an oh, yeah. hour on each one of these five bullet okay, points. Okay, be quiet and let's get but, forward. But just, I see you. I love you. I accept you. <laughs> Randy, I love it. You're learning. Step number two of the mindset reset formula. The world. Randy Gage has mastered step number two. All right, let's go into the third primal programming, the physical belief. So you guys are catching on here. The physical truths, the physical beliefs, they're the exact opposite in the spiritual realm. And all we have to do, we, we become who we practice to be. All we have to do is shift that hierarchy and start focusing on the spiritual truths. So the third belief in the physical realm, the third final uh, primal program is my uniqueness is weird or not needed. It's I'm weird. I don't fit in. Yeah. I don't, I don't fit, fit in. in is probably the universal one. Yep, I don't fit in. And people think that all the time. I don't fit in when what's the truth in this pure potential energy of this experience called life. What's the truth on this planet? The truth is if we had all drivers, we would kill each other. If we had all in passives, nothing would get done. So could you and I right now, you guys, just stop and value our authenticity, value our quirks and realize who I am 
in my uniqueness, with all my quirks, with all my silliness, with all my habitual ways of being, with all my propensities, could it be needed for balance on this planet? So the third primal program is I'm not enough. My uniqueness is weird. It's a judgment, a self-judgment about our contribution to the world. Yeah, we don't totally, fit in. totally made up, totally made up. Totally made up. We so need what all would it look those. like if we shifted that into yeah. our spiritual realm that I'm needed, who I am. Oh my God, what a fun ride this life could be. If we realize we came here to experience life, like that song by One Republic, I lived. I lived. I did it all. I, with every broken bone, I swear I lived. Mine is heart, because I've had my heart broken lots of times. But who cares? I had my heart broken. You know what that means? It means I really loved my husband of 18 years. Yeah. It means I really loved Patrick, who you met. And then we had to break up four years later. I'm so grateful. I'm willing to love outside myself. Like I just give right. it all I've got. And when you give it all you've got, you're living life. Will you get hurt? Yes. But that song is, I played it this morning, Randy, just like I lived with every broken heart. I swear I lived. I'm living life. I'm going to launch that book even when I'm not ready. I'm going to launch that company, even though my knees are shaking. I'm going to say yes to dating again and put my friggin' pro picture up on a, on a web, a dating website, even though I don't trust at this moment, I'm going to risk because I want to say at the end of my life, I swear I lived. Yeah, you know, I did the show with Stephen Pressfield last week and we were talking about writing, of course, and poetry and music and Ryan Tedder, I don't know if he wrote that song. I'm assuming he did because he usually writes most of the One Republic songs, but mm. just such a gifted mm. poet, such ah. a gifted storyteller. And that song is amazing. Um, I'll try and put, I'll put a link to that song on YouTube yes. and in the show notes for you guys. And I'll look up, I pr but I would bet Ryan Tedder wrote it or co-wrote it. I love it. I hope so. With every broken heart. I swear I lived. All right, number four. Number four of the primal programs is I can't change. I can't change. This is my lot in life. This is just how it is. This is it because I'm Mexican. That's what my husband used to tell me. <laughs> this is so because I'm Irish. I am Irish. This is so because I'm a woman. This is so because I didn't have a college degree. This is so because I did have a college degree. Right. We are in our primal program. We are so, we don't even know we're doing this, you guys. This is the thing. This is all in, in the unconscious. We don't even realize that we hold ourselves back because we think we don't have the capacity to change. That's a primal programming. Don't change because the brain wants you to stay the same because to the brain, to the subconscious mind, safe means, I mean, the same means you're safe. So of course it wants you to stay, stay the same. It means you're safe. It's predictable. But we've got to push through and dissolve that primal program. I do have the capacity to change. I can hire a coach and learn. I can trust again, even though I feel untrustworthy. I, I can, you, you've got to retrain the brain to these spiritual realms, these spiritual truths, these pure potential truths of I have the capacity to change. There is enough and I'm enough. My uniqueness is needed. Who I am right now, what a fun ride that would be if I could just give myself permission to show up authentically. And there's nothing wrong here. There's nothing wrong here. All right, fifth one. Okay, you didn't have any comment on that one? Uh, I think it's really self-explanatory. I think, and you dealt with the the... As people can see, let me turn off my phone so I don't get this bit ringing. Uh, they're so interrelated. They, the worthiness issue weaves through the many of them. The uh, guilt issue weaves through them. Mm -hmm. They're all limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. They're all scarcity beliefs. Um, they're the, you know, mm -hmm. for the writers out there, you know, when we're writing, we always say stasis equals death. 
Mm. And that's the kind of the moral of my radical rebirth book. I think it's the moral of Lisa's book mm -hmm. that uh, if we stay the same, we're dying inside. We're not, you know, our, our, our pathway here is to grow and evolve. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, even if we're still technically alive, we're not really alive. If we just say, okay, I'm going to keep my head below the cubicle and do whatever I have to do mm -hmm. so I don't get fired and I can retire in 23 years, 11 months mm -hmm. and two days and five hours. Mm -hmm. And I can binge Netflix all weekend so I don't have to think about my life of quiet desperation till Monday morning when the alarm clock goes off again. That's not life. Life mm -hmm. is challenge, growth, mm -hmm. adventure, yep. opportunity, and most importantly, risk. <laughs> mm -hmm. And why is that? You know why that's that way? Because who we really are is this potential energy and potential energy must create. It's nothing until it gets a thought, until it gets a dream, until it's told what to form into. And that's our thoughts. That's our dreams. That's our emotions that fuel those thoughts and dreams. Because if you really believe you guys that you are pure potential energy, what a beautiful plan this planet earth is because it is your opportunity to have a physical body with senses, physical senses, sight, touch, smell, feel that you can experience yourself. If you didn't have a physical body with this physicality, you would just be pure potential energy buzzing around waiting to be put into form or just all this possibility, what wasted energy that is. So do you understand why there's some inner angst with every human being? There's inner angst because we, we know to our core, deep down inside, that who we are is this pure potential energy. We have an awareness of that, but we've collapsed our physical body, our physical beliefs, our truths, our circumstances. We've collapsed that with this pure potential energy. And if we are not creating with an idea, a thought, which is a seed and planting that thought in our mindset, in our heart, and then watering it with faith, like giving it the fuel. And a definition of faith is a substance that creates the invisible. So it's an actual substance. So you give that seed, that thought, that dream, a focus, and then, and then milk it with faith and belief that's what you're called to do here. And what a fun ride that is in life, that you are pure potential energy and you have a physical body to experience the creations from that pure potential energy. Without the physical I got, body. I got a bunch of people, they have people behind them waiting for that treadmill. They got to get off, but they, they're afraid to get off without hearing what number, number five? five is. <laughs> number five is my power is outside of me. That's the primal belief. So that's why we're waiting for someone to come save us. My power is outside of me. So that's why we coerce and manipulate because we're proving that we're worthy. My power is outside of me. That's why we are so addicted to our achievements and even addicted to our failures because they mean something we think because our power is outside of us. But what if we shift that hierarchy? What if we shifted to that spiritual truth that my power is inside of me? And I take responsibility for everything that happens in my life because I'm the creator, I'm the source, I'm the light that's creating it all. My power is within me. Now, I wanna give a definition of responsibility. Responsibility for me is my ability to respond. I have an ability to respond. That's where your power is, my friends, your ability to respond. Hmm, isn't that interesting? That person's yelling at me. Hmm. Oops, there it is. There's my anxiety. Hello, anxiety. I can be with you. Or even success. Oh my gosh, I created this global multi-million dollar business, which was so exciting. And then for several years, I, I rested on my laurels. And then I felt a lot of inner angst because that pure potential energy wants to create. And it needs me to give it a dream, to give it a thought and put it in action so that it can generate a physical matter, a physical form, a result. All right. So I got a, I got one for you Number here. Number five. I got one for you here now. What do you say to people like me who say, 
You're exactly right. People have, they're born with this belief that their power is outside themselves. And then what do you say to the people like me who say, well, of course they feel that because that's what your organized religion has been teaching them for thousands of years, that they are sorry sinners, that they're born needing redemption, that they're born not worthy, that they need to be reincarnated, mm. that the power is not from them. The power comes from the omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent, supernatural entity in the sky. Mm -hmm. And, and it's not in the sky. <laughs> well, it is in the sky, right? It's right here in me. It's right there in you. And it expands to the highest levels of the ethers beyond time itself. And it goes as deep as the core of the earth and beyond. So what would I say to that? Yeah. I would say, I'm sorry. But it's a new day. I'm sorry that religion, organized religion, had to hold on to power in order to teach its people, its congregation, that it needed something else and that their power is outside of them. I'm sorry that that happened. But look at the world, you guys. We are in a global reset. It's coming back. It's coming together in a new way, not even back. It's coming together in a new way that you know our health system, our political system, our religious systems, our educational systems, our health hospital system, every system is resetting. And I believe it's because you and I, meaning you, the listener, the viewer, Randy, me, we are, we are being more aware of who we really are and that we are not that physical reality. We are the one observing the physical reality. And when you take on that belief, I'm the one observing the physical reality right here. I'm the one creating it. You're living the core belief, the spiritual belief that my power is within me. And so my answer specifically to organized religion, I'm sorry that, that people were and maybe even still trapped in that primal belief. So we met God more than 20 years, maybe it's 25 years ago. How long ago did we meet? I guess it would have been around 91, right? When I joined. 29, 20, 29 years ago, because Connor, oh, 28 years ago, because I met you when, when I was pregnant with Connor and he's 28. Okay, so 28 years ago. So you, we met, you were a Bible thumping fundamentalist Christian. I was a, a heathen, um, atheist, uh, demagogue. Yes. Um, and I loved you. <laughs> and you and our me. views, both of us have, and that's not, actually when I met you, I was probably, no, I was probably doing ministry at Unity when I met you. And mm -hmm. so it, when we met, I was probably a lay minister at my church, mm -hmm. became a fire breathing a a atheist, now mm -hmm. call myself a fundamentalist agnostic. Okay. I've kind of labeled, evolved. labeled, labeled. <laughs> yeah. How, how do you, how do you feel your, view about God, faith, and religion has evolved over the last 28 years? Obviously, quite some, right? It's evolved. And I'll, I'll share where I'm at right now. But you guys, where I'm at right now, it's just where I'm at right now, in this moment in time. I'm open. I'm, I'm, I'm evolving all the time. But where I'm at right now, in my consciousness, in my awareness, is that this entity called God, and I love that name. I don't have adversity. To that label, but it is just a label. And it is a way for our human minds to be able to understand, embrace, or accept a concept. So for me, I, I got a great relationship with God. I believe that this omnipotent, uh, omniscient, omnipresent power exists. And I believe it exists in each one of you, in your very soul, in your spirit. And it exists in each one of me, of, inside me. So the best of my ability, Randy, I see that and I allow people to show up in their pure potential energy, which is their spiritual nature. And that's how, to the best of my ability, I allow people to show up that way. And I, I make mistakes and fall and judge people just like everyone. However, that is my cause that I would truly believe and my life would look like I believe my power is within me, the God within 
and I can create whatever I want. I just have to harness the power of my mind because the mind is the physical aspect, but we need the mind. We need the physicality to actually create matter. <laughs> so I just have to keep, uh, no, shift the hierarchy, keep my spiritual nature leading the servant, leading the mind, harnessing the power of the mind. And look at what I've created in my life. Global businesses, clients who are doing the same. One of my clients just two months ago said, Lisa, I've been in real estate for 15 years and I've never sold a multi-million dollar home. And since I've coached with you in Mindset Reset, I've listed and sold four multi-million dollar homes. This is just a Mindset Reset and it's easy. Yeah, you once, you sell the, and once you sell the first one, the old negative belief is abolished and then it can never get you again. You know, you've changed. It's the total, total breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So you were very much, uh, when we met, Lisa was married to, as she said, a, a Mexican guy who had very old school views of marriage, would have been very happy for you to be barefoot and pregnant, yep. baking cookies every day. Mm -hmm. um, that very aligned to who I was back then. Very aligned yeah. to who I was back then. Yeah. It was uh, so that marriage ended, you went through your promiscuous cougar face. It was amazing. <laughs> yes, I did. Uh, now you're happily married again, living happily ever after. I what did you learn? What did, what, did, pilot. <laughs> what did you learn about yourself in that journey? Mm, I have the capacity to change. And that's what life is about. Reinventing myself all the time, giving myself permission that I'm worthy enough to achieve my goals. I'm worthy enough to be ambitious. I don't apologize for my ambition anymore. Ambition is a great word. It's a great way of being. Yeah. I'm, I'm expansive in my contribution. If you knew how much money I give away, I love it. I tuck $20 bills in, my, in, a, little, um, in a little pocket in my, my uh, shorts when I go for my run every morning. And I, whoever's like contemplative and meditative right here on the benches in Huntington Beach, I come up to them and I just hand them a $20 bill and just say, I'm just, I just want to give this to you. And it's so hilarious, their responses, but I just love to, I love to play games with myself in life. And I give myself permission to be playful, be fun, accept my abundance, like the name of your book, which you dedicated to me all those years ago. I love it. And so I'm, I'm just, I'm just open, having fun in life. And I just want to be a great contribution and help others to free themselves from their primal program and step into their greatness, their, their ability to create anything they want by just tapping into that pure potential energy and harnessing the power of the mind, like literally allowing that physical nature to be your servant. You tell it what to do. You tell it to sit like a dog. You train it. <laughs> and that's what so, I'm up to, helping people do that. All right, so it's 2035. Ooh. What is Lisa J doing? Oh. I have, I now own several retreat centers. The first one is in Paradise, California. I, we just looked at property last week. So I'm own, I own several retreat centers and people come to my retreat centers because you know, I give, I do mastermind retreats. I've done 24 of them. My next one is in Catalina Island in August. And instead of going to these mansions or these, these hotels, they come to my retreat center. And they come there to retrain their brain. They come there for respite. They come to there to shift the hierarchy. They come there to go through the formula, the mindset reset formula, recreate themselves. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just going from retreat center to retreat center that I own. And I'm having fun helping people radically transform their mindset and create a life they love. Okay, so let's talk about the book, the new book, Mindset Reset, Lisa Jimenez. Um, full disclosure here, peeps, uh, I have an author apprentice program. It's like a one-year program uh, where I take a small group of people who want to write a nonfiction book. And so Lisa went through this process. We actually did hers one-on-one -on -one special COVID-19 edition. So it was me and her working remotely as opposed to the group meeting like we had done the previous years. Um, so I have, I, you know, I was with her on this book from uh, 
idea to just is it gestation or gas station i forget gestation, gestation, gestation. to birth yep. i adore the book i think everybody could benefit from this book and by the way it is kind of spiritually slanted because yes. lisa is kind of spiritually slanted but i think it doesn't matter if you're a hindu muslim atheist agnostic uh, rastafarian the great principles in the book that will be very helpful to you. What do you, what would, what is the, what drove you to write this book? What is the thing that this book says that no other book on earth has ever told people before? Mm. <laughs> Two principles. The main principle is you are not your thoughts, your circumstances, your beliefs. They were hard hardwired into you and you just have collapsed who you really are you are the one observing those thoughts and those circumstances and uh, so the deep desire of that book is to set people free that they can they can shift that hierarchy of having that that primal program cause them to you know have a triggered response or or limit their success and and so what's unique about it is that it's a formula you just do the inner work. I give you mind shift aerobics I, or mind shift games. I give you mind shift mantras. And every day you do the inner work to retrain your brain and align your specific goals. I call it your victory vision. Align your victory vision with that mind, with harnessing that mind so that you are you embody your victory vision. And so that's what I love about it is it's a simple formula to follow and actually do the inner work every day. And then you start seeing results and you're like, wow, this is working. This is working. And you keep, you keep on keeping on in the transforming of your mindset and the retraining of the brain because you can, you get to. So should they just go to Amazon or do you have a special page for them to go to? Where's yep, the they can best go to place? Amazon, Mindset Reset by Lisa Jimenez. Or if you want to get an autographed copy, you can go, it's the same price. You can go to my personal website. Same is, price? It's the same price. Have I taught you nothing, Grasshopper? To charge more for an autographed copy? Of course. <laughs> it's $247. You go to <laughs> lisajcoaching.com. <laughs> it's 1995 at lisajcoaching.com. All right. So delighted to have you back on the podcast. Any final words you want to share with the peeps out there in Wonderland? Mm, I just want to share with all of your viewers and listeners, you're doing the work. This is it. Continue to come back to Power Prosperity Podcast. Continue to follow thought leaders like Randy and myself. Continue to do the inner work because you're worthy of the best life that's aligned with your and congruent with who you really are. You really can have the life that you dream of. Anything is possible. You have that pure potential in you. You just need to learn how to harness the power of your mind. All right. Magnificent. Lisa J, peace, love. All you guys listening out there, peace, love, and unicorns. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you.